Negligent mom gets arrested again, but luckily one of her children has an identifiable father and he might get custody today. The worker does have an update on that. Thank you. What about um, oh, all of the other parents and other respondents? Well, all right. Yeah. Are here, however, yeah. What? The non responding parents are here, however. Oh, good. Welcome. Again. Um, Ms. Thomas, would you like to address uh, with your caseworker first the location question of Ms. Boker? Yes, yeah, Senator, if Ms. Copas can be sworn in, please. Sure. Ms. Copas, come on up to her, please. Can I keep my report with me? Sure. Thank you. Objections? No. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be God. I do. Ms. Copas, um, can you have you had contact with Ms. Boker this reporting period? Yeah. And were she informed of today's hearing? Uh, she was. She also had um, a criminal hearing today at 10 o'clock this morning in which I had contact with her to attempt to get her to that hearing as well. Um, so she was well aware as of early this morning and previous that she had a hearing today at 2, as well as the morning hearing that she did not attend. Okay. Do you know where she currently is? I do not. She did indicate to me approximately half hour ago that she was coming. I... I call it, she's not here. And have you heard from her since that last communication a half hour ago? I have not. Okay. Has Ms. Boker been incarcerated at all this reporting period? She has. Was there any, um, like, substance abuse treatment that she engaged in, whether rehab or uh, inpatient treatment? So um, I did complete the initial intake with mom through CMH to get her into substance abuse treatment. She was then signed to Parkside. My understanding is that she did complete her 48 hour intake approximately on April 15th. Um, I know that she's had appointments scheduled since then, but according to um, her primary um, counselor, Chris, she has not attended those appointments. So it's, there's not a chance that she is like at a rehab facility at this moment? I do not believe so, no. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, as it relates to Ms. Boker's whereabouts, I have no further questions for Ms. Copas, but we'll obviously have more questions as it relates to the court report uh, when whenever the court is ready. All right. Um, Ms. Heiss, would you like to defer on your report until after that, or would you like to report now? After, I think. Thank you. All right, Ms. Uh, Thomas, you may continue whenever you're ready. Thank you. Ms. Copas, as it relates to Ms. Boker, how would you describe her level of compliance with and benefit from her case service plan this review period? Overall, Ms. Uh, Boker is in poor compliance with her case service plan. Um, it looks like she's not doing that great at community, um, keeping you updated, I guess, on any services or anything that she is doing. Um, she has not. She has kept in uh, sporadic communication with the department. Um, she does communicate when it benefits her. However, if I'm seeking her for information, that could take a while to get a hold of, depending on the circumstances. With in your report, these um, new well, I, I there's some criminal uh, cases that are under the case the component of the case service plan regarding law enforcement. Are those um, additional charges that she has picked up this review period? She has picked up two additional charges. My understanding is she got resisting arrest at her. Um, last time she had contact with law enforcement, and I do believe that they were filed as fel felonies. Okay. And she's not complying with her terms of probation. Is that still accurate? Um, as of this morning, um, she had firmly violated four times, including having contact with protected parties and not training for um, the court. Uh, from Parkside, you said that she did her intake, but have you received any updates on any progress? I'm sorry, if you can just repeat that portion. 
Yeah, um, my understanding is that she did complete her 48 hour intake approximately on April 15th. Um, she has scheduled appointments with Chris, who's her main contact through Parkside. Um, however, those appointments have not been kept for various reasons, including her being arrested. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, parent education, how that looks like it was terminated through orchards. Yes. So she was originally referred for the orchards, um, family program for parenting education. Um, it took approximately three weeks for her to get engaged and initiate that service. And once it was initiated, she was arrested. Um, and that caused the, um, referral to be terminated. If she's able to take care of her um, and outstanding warrants and whatnot, is that enough? Is that a service that could be re-referred for? Absolutely. We're in the process of re-referring for that program. Um, it does appear that there might be a wait list for that program. Um, so we are doing our best to get her back in. Um, we'll be looking for other sources of parenting education in the meantime. Um, and it looks like mom's doing pretty good at attending parenting time, though. Is that correct? Um, initially, when this case first started, mother did very well with her parenting time. She was very engaging, um, very one-on-one -on -one with the kids, um, very present for those, those parenting times. Um, recently, we've seen that kind of dwindle, uh, where I'm not seeing her participating in as much, and we're seeing a lot of missed uh, parenting time mostly deciding that she's sick or incarcerated. Um, and the drug screens that you've included are positive for, one was positive for the other one, positive for THC and COVID. Um, another one positive for THC. Are there any negatives that you've had from her during this review period? So she was actually um, referred for colors and was assigned the color purple and expected to screen once a week. Um, she had not participated in any of those. The screens we do have are when I met with her face-to-face -face and asked her for drug screens. She has not complied with her drug screens, nor do I have any negative screens for her. And the children, it, it's an interesting setup. Um, some of the children with Mr. Fox, they, they're they with grandma, but under a power of attorney, correct? Um, no, my understanding is that all three children were placed with um, grandmother. Okay. But dad is a non-respondent. Yes. Okay. And um, is, is the placement still working out okay for this family? It is. Um, the family has actually been able to come together, um, both punitive dad, legal dad, and grandmother for all three children's benefit. Um, they have been able to co-parent. They've been able to facilitate things without the department needing to intervene. Um, they've done a fantastic job of ensuring that these kids have built new relationships, but have also maintained old ones. Wonderful. And then today you've also included the DNA re um, results for Mr. Bal Balachino as it relates to, I believe this is the youngest child, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And he is the biological father. Is that um, how you are interpreting the DNA results? Yes. And did you discuss those results with him? I have. Okay. And is he receiving parenting time with his child? He is. He started uh, parenting time approximately on May 6th, right after we had a delay in getting the results to us. Um, and so he's been visiting um, with two to three times a week. Um, since then, we started initiating overnights, um, and they have been going more. Um, it's my understanding that he is actually at the home quite frequently, um, more than the two or three times a week, depending on how his work schedule is. And the other children, um, the older ones, are they getting overnights with their father? Uh, Mr. Fox also visits um, the home every day regularly to ensure that children are being cared for, as well as he also takes them on weekends. Okay. And this arrangement, like you said, that's working out fine for the family? It is, although we do ask that um, Austin be made the legal dad for Briella. All right, thank you. Is there any other updates that you would like to provide the court as relates to the children? Not as relates to the children, no. Okay. Um, for reasonable efforts component, um, what reasonable efforts have been made to help mom with 
I guess, gaining some traction on her case service plan? Um, we've provided transportation um, to and from services. We've offered transportation to and from services. Um, we recently, as of last week, um, have introduced Linda Edwards as the supervisor specialist to assist with the parenting time. Um, the goal moving forward is, as of right now, the children visit twice a week for two hours with mom. Um, that seems to take up a quite a bit of her time with Brody. Um, and so we're, we're trying to add a third visit that would allow mom to have one in one time with kids. So two visits with all kids and one visit without. Um, in addition to actually taking her two services, we have not with all the services we provided for her at this time. Thank you for that information, Ms. Copas. Uh, Your Honor, with that, I have no further questions for Ms. Copas and move to admit the court report with its attachments. Objections? I have none. No position without a client. All right, they are received. Uh, Cross-examination, Mr. McFarland? No, Your Honor. Brian, well, I do have one question, yes. Did my client indicate where she was when she called you, indicating that she would be here? Um, she did not. I made the assumption that she was staying with a friend, Kyle, because um, that is the last um, address I had known for her. Um, but she has been transient this reporting period um, and has not stayed in one place very long. Uh, your court report says that Mr. Balancino has an, a custody attorney. Is that right? Is my understanding yes. Have you talked to that person about a custody order for his child, Briella? Um, I have talked to Austin himself. I've not spoken with his attorney. Um, he did let me know prior to hiring an attorney that he would be doing so, and so I ensured that he had everything that he needed from our foster care case, case file. Uh, am I right that the, in the police report, the mother was found at Mr. Fox's house when she was taken in for a warrant? Yes. Um, what, what's the nature of that? What, do you, have you interviewed anybody to know why she was there? Um, she said that she, it, it appears as though um, in between some of her stays, she may have been staying at Mr. Fox's home when the children were not there. Um, and it appears as though she came back to the home knowing that the children were there because she didn't have anywhere to stay and felt the need that she could stay there despite the fact that the children were there. Have you had any evidence that the children see their mom through Mr. Fox? I have not. And um, are all three children going to have basically daycare with grandmother, maternal grandmother? As of right now, that is the, the tentative plan for grandma to be the primary child care. She'll also be the one transporting to and from parenting time. Okay, and then uh, we'll see what happens by the time school year comes. Yes. And um, are you scheduling a family team meeting about the older two children and their placement? We actually have a family team meeting scheduled for today at 3.30 to discuss that placement. Okay. Is it on Teams? It's in person or on Teams. Because you know I can't do teams, right? We've discussed this. I'm aware of your struggles. Thank you. Because um, there was an FTM in this case, wherein it was decided that the little well, little girl um, is going to, um, it, with the judge's permission, if she's made, if her father is declared to be her paternal um, legal father today, she might be placed with him as soon as today. Yes, that is the plan. But the older two children, that uh, that family team meeting will be today at 3.30. Thank you. Um, how long was mom incarcerated for this warrant that they picked her up on? Um, she's never spent more than a week. Um, and, as, and I apologize. As of this morning, when she did not appear for her hearing, there is another bench warrant issued for her arrest. Um, is anybody uh, posting bail for her? Um, my understanding is um, the friend Kyle that she is staying with. Okay. Um, one more question. Just to... Okay. I can't think of it. Thank you. I have nothing further. Uh, redirect, Ms. Thomas. No, Your Honor. Today was scheduled for um, a permanency planning hearing as well. For the oldest two children, um, 
Does it look like the best arrangement for the family is going to be to stay with grandma? Um, I believe that the best arrangement is going to be with dad. Um, he has the supports in place to ensure that the kids are being cared for. Even if mom is residing there? I do not believe that that is something that is going to continue. In my conversations with Mr. Fox, it did not appear. I think he understood the severity of what had happened. And moving forward, I don't foresee that being an issue. You don't, you don't find it concerning now, given that the allegations were pretty open about what's been happening with her, that he would ask her into the house at this point? I have concerns that he allowed her into the home. I don't have, I believe that he can still keep the kids safe from her. He did so in calling law enforcement when she did come to the home of labor there, and he made sure that the children were never in her presence. Okay. Redirect, Ms. Thomas, or questions based on my questions? No, Your Honor. Mr. Mayor McFarland? Just one, the family team meeting today at 3 or 3.30, does that involve my client? She was invited. Um, it was initially scheduled while she was in jail, but I have invited her since then. And is she, she has the contact information? Yes. Yeah, she, and I apologize. She indicated that she'd be by person because it's my understanding as part of one of her bond conditions, she does not have access to the internet. Okay, and you'd still encourage her to participate if she showed up, right? Absolutely. Nothing further. Yeah, yes. not within the scope of your questioning, but I remembered what I was going to ask before. May I? Yes. Um, so the screens for mother are generally confidential. Is that right? So the, these family members who are trying to support mom or, or um, tough love or whatever, they're not aware that as late as May 7th, mom was toast, testing positive for COVID. Is that they, right? They're not aware of that. Um, I was we would not have told them that. And then in April and several times in March, it, on all these screens, there's positive weight. Correct. Thank you. So, um, thank you, Jerome. That's all. Thank you for your testimony. We return your seat. <laughs> Any other witness testimony today, Ms. Thomas? Um, no, Your Honor. Mr. McFarland? None. Ms. Heiss. Your Honor, I have not visited with these children. We um, Our paths just didn't. Um, coordinate, but grandmother has the children during the day and is anticipated that she will, we've communicated several times and uh, she was here at court this morning. I think she's here today now. Um, it's a remarkable relationship she has with these, um, the fathers of these kids and they are really amazing kids. So um, I look forward to visiting with them and filing my uh, verified statement as soon as I can. Thank you, Your Honor. Comments in closing, Ms. Thomas? Um, thank you, Your Honor. I believe that this court I, has given the department placement authority through prior court orders, and so we would just ask that continue, but also recognize Mr. Bellancino as the legal father. And uh, with that, we would be able to assist the family with transition planning if need be, but we can always change placement as long as we have that authority in the court order. Um, but with that, I think... It is really early in the case, and I know that we haven't um, really touched upon that permanency planning component. I know that mom was given proper notice of that, um, but given that there are two non-respondent legal fathers in this matter, I think the um, the goal for unification is still appropriate. Mom uh, is in need of some additional assistance in getting um, kind of back on track with her case service plan or getting on track to begin with with her case service plan. And hopefully, as uh, maybe she gets over, she'll be back on track with parenting time. Um, but with that, I believe that there's, um, at least as it relates to the children, a sufficient safeguards for Mama and their fathers. And we do ask for a 90 day review, um, pretty much status quo at this time. Thank you. No comments. Your Honor, I am probably wrong, but if placement were given to the, the father of the older two, he may choose to put the children back in a guardianship with grandma, a POA with grandma. Um, the, the relationship is, is remarkably good because it's so important for grandma to see the children and the dad comes over like daily when he isn't working. And um, so I, I heard your concerns about permanence being finished with custody with the non-respondent fathers. And I think that can be worked out for even next review period. I don't know that Miss 
that mother will stipulate to custody, but um, I'm a very cooperative family. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, the court finds all interested parties are given notice for purposes of today's review hearing and permanency planning hearing. Um, I'd like to have you explore as part of your uh, planning today, uh, the idea of a potentially of juvenile guardianship to support the family in that and also to have that structure there so that if something happens and Ms. Goldberg is back or uh, other concerns arise, then um, the department would be able to spring back into action, frankly, which is how those are designed. Plus they have the additional supports of the funding piece. Uh, that would also give Ms. Boker uh, some additional time that would done, wouldn't require us to terminate her parental rights and it would allow the family to stabilize in the uh, situation that they're currently in. So please explore that uh, as we come back. I'll set our next review hearing as a review and a permanency planning hearing. Uh, it does appear uh, that there is no risk of harm associated with allowing the department to place the youngest child with her now legal father, Mr. Austin Valencino. I will uh, reflect in today's court order that that uh, DNA has established that legal relationship as well. And I look forward to looking at those custody pleadings. Uh, but uh, if you want me to, Ms. Thomas, I can reflect that that placement is changed effective today, uh, or you can simply do it under your authority. It's okay. Yeah, I think we can just do it under our placing authority. Thank you. All right. I do find that returning the children to the care of Ms. Heather Boker does present a reasonable risk of harm. Uh, and that the arrangements made basically by consent between the other non-respondent parent and the grandparent uh, is safe at this time and allows him to maintain his bond with the children and keep, uh, keep some boundaries there as well, considering that Ms. Boker is still pushing uh, the boundaries, if you will, as it relates to that relationship with him and around the children. So until she gets used to not being there, I, I wouldn't want that to be a place where they frequent. Frankly, um, Ms. Boker is clearly struggling at the moment. Uh, she hasn't been able to overcome the challenges presented by some of the substances uh, that she's uh, using. I'm sure that's related to many of the uh, things that were discovered in the psychological evaluation as well, including some past trauma that she needs to address in order to get to where she can address her substance use. She hasn't shown us she's been able to find a place to provide for the children, to provide financially for the children. Uh, so many challenges uh, get in the way of us returning the children to Ms. Boker, uh, but I'll need to have the update for sure as it relates to Mr. Fox in the next uh, report period uh, and whether or not uh, he would need to be named as a respondent or if there's another resolution to the case uh, that everyone could agree to. All right, um, our next regular review, I'll schedule up in three months. This is September. We actually might have to back it up just a little bit. Are you all available August 28th in the afternoon beginning at 2.30? I'm going to speculate yes. I don't have my phone. Yes. 3.30. Yes, I'm available. What do you guys think of this case? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.